Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. And today, we actually only have two big stories. Well, I, it's kind of weird because one of the stories is Nintendo's financial report. And there's so many mini stories within that big story that I didn't think we needed a whole lot more. Although we will talk about the brand new Pokemon trailer that just dropped today because... I'm impressed, and I'm going to explain why I'm impressed when we get to that news. Now, before we get to that news, I want to remind you that, hey, we are on our road to 80,000 subscribers, so I would appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, I want you to leave a comment down below and tell me, hey, what version of Switch do you own? Version 1, version 2, which is that red box Switch, do you own a Switch Lite, and or a Switch OLED, or is it some sort of special edition? Let me know. Now, let's get right into the news. And our first story deals with a brand new Pokemon trailer that dropped today. This trailer is basically four minutes long and it features the Ed Sheeran song, Celestial. And I gotta say, I wasn't sure on the song choice, but as I watched the trailer, I get it. See, it seems to be a huge recap trailer of everything they have shown so far with a few new locations tossed in. They also unveiled a book feature. We're so close to launch. We're 10 days away. I'm not going to dive too deep into the book stuff, but uh, they didn't really talk that much about it in the trailer. It was more so talked about in a press release anyways. Uh, there was a big emphasis in this trailer on adventure, which admittedly the song helps you get into. So, hey, that's why I said it's a pretty good choice. It seems to emphasize a lot on treasuring your experience. This is a line repeated many times in the game, at least based off the trailer. It sort of gives off that vibe that, this is the greatest Pokemon adventure we have ever created, and we hope you treasure your time with it. At least, I don't know, that's not a quote or anything, it's just something that this trailer gives me the impression that they are very proud of this game and think that it might be the best thing they've ever done. Not their own words, they've said, it's just the feeling this trailer invokes. Now, am I genuinely excited for two straight Pokemon games? God, I'll check my pulse later because that's just unheard of for me. I I've been out of Pokemon for so long. You know, I'm, I'm an infamous Gen 1-er, I suppose. And yet, I was super excited for Pokemon Legends Arceus. And yeah, I ended up really loving that game. I ended up living up and exceeding my expectations. And now we have this open world, Scarlet and Violet, where some people, have, have, just like with Legends Arceus, knock the visuals or this and that. But man, does the gameplay look incredible? Does the multiplayer gameplay look incredible? Does the multiple you know, branching types of stories you can do, whether you're going with the traditional gym route with the Elite Four or whatever they end up using, or if you go the, the route of treasure hunting and finding, you know, specialized Pokemon. I, look, this looks so exciting to me. I haven't been this excited for a mainline, like traditional style Pokemon game in so long. And is this even traditional? I feel like it's more like an evolution of the traditional, but obviously people consider this a normal release. It's a dual game release like usual. I'm really excited for Pokemon and I hope you guys are too. If not, that's okay. It's not for everyone. Definitely wasn't for me for nearly 20 years, but now, am I back? I guess we'll find out when I play the games later this month. Now, before we get into our next story, I gotta remind you of today's sponsor, or really, partner, Ewin Racing. Ewin Racing makes amazing chairs, like the one I'm sitting in right now, and on down. This is actually one of their XL chairs. This is on their pricier end. It's meant for people up to 500 pounds. It's intended for people over six feet tall. I am not said person. I am 5'5", five, five, and nowhere near 500 pounds. But that being said, they have a whole bunch of variety of chairs, uh, ranging from all price brackets from $230 all the way up to $450. I have chairs in my studio of all price ranges, and honestly, I love them all. I've been using their chairs for over two years at this point, and I couldn't be happier with their products. If you use our link down below, be sure to use our discount code Nintendo Prime to get 20% off of whatever sale price they have going on. So they might have discount codes on their website. Our discount code won't stack with their discount codes, but it will stack with their sale prices. So if you go and you click on a chair and you see, oh, original 300 knocked down to 240 or whatever, it'll be 20% off that 240. I know they had some sort of Thanksgiving sale going on. Well, guess what? They have a 15% code off on their $230 chairs. We have a 20% code that works on the entire website, so our code's actually better for their cheaper chairs. I'm just saying, go ahead and check them out if you're thinking about getting a new desk chair today, and let's get into our next story. So Nintendo dropped their financials for quarter two of the current fiscal year of 2022-2023, and it's a doozy, guys. There's a lot. There's good news, there's bad news, and we're going to kind of 
go with the possibly bad news and we'll end with the good because I feel like we should always end with a positive sandwich that positive and negative news right so let's get into these financials so some light work first before we get into any of the other stories Nintendo of Europe is being expanded they are taking Nintendo of France Nintendo Benelux and Nintendo Iberka, and I'm, I, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing these names, and combining them into Nintendo of Europe, which were renamed to Nintendo of Europe SE. France and Benelux will join in July of 2023, and Emberica, or however you say this, is joining in August of 2024. The idea is to simplify and accelerate decision making, something that is pretty slow between the different branches today, so they're consolidating some branches of Nintendo into one to just make it easier to manage. I, I think that's probably a good thing. Now, Nintendo and mobile game company that they have partnered with in the past, Denna, are forming a new joint venture called Nintendo Systems. The, the objective of this company is to strengthen the digitalization of Nintendo's business, which will include research and development, along with the creation of value-added services to further reinforce Nintendo's relationship with consumers. This could be Nintendo Switch Online related. This could have to do with the online app they have on phones. There's a lot of things that could be in the works here. Obviously, we don't really know what's going to come of it yet. There's some speculation out there. My good friend Mike Odyssey did a really, really long speculative bit in his video today, if you guys want to go check that out. But I don't even know where to begin with this speculation because there's not a lot here until we start to see what sort of things they're working on. Now, the new joint venture uh, between those two companies, so Nintendo Systems, is scheduled to kick off on April 3rd, 2023. So, not too far from now. Now let's get into some of the actual numbers and the negative bit of news, I guess, if you want to call it that, and that's going to be the Switch sales numbers. So total Switch sales are at 114.33 million, up from the 111 million reported last time. So you can see you got about 3 million in sales in this last quarter. Nintendo saw a 19% decrease in sales so far this fiscal year compared to last, and they blame this on a semiconductor shortage ironically later in their report they note the semiconductor shortage has improved and in all actuality well this is nintendo's own charts they have manufactured more nintendo switch units in quarter one and quarter two of this fiscal year than at any point in switch's life breaking production records for two straight quarters so it's hard at least for me to fathom blaming the semiconductor shortage for why sales are down when you're making more switches than ever. It doesn't line up. That being said, it seems as if they're maybe telling a little bit of a fib to avoid headlines before the holidays, as the 19% decrease in Switch sales is not seemingly due to any shortages. To couple with this, Nintendo has adjusted their forecasted Switch sales for the fiscal year from 21 million down to 19 million. If that number holds, it would be about a four to five million drop in unit sales from last fiscal year, with seemingly nothing coming up at the moment to turn it around. To give you an idea, the new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Switch is readily in stock right now at several retailers, including Walmart and Target, off of Nintendo's official website. And having a new special edition readily available to still buy this far after it launched still is unheard of for the Switch in the past. So there is that. Despite the sales dipping and nothing really being able to turn it around to get back to previous highs, and by the way, 19 million sales is still absolutely incredible in a year, but it's just showing a decline. This gets back to basically pre-pandemic sales of 2019 and probably will sink further next fiscal year if we're honest. That doesn't mean Switch has no momentum. And here's where we get to the positive. This is because software continues to sell at incredible rates. So let's dive into that good news. So here's updates on some newer games from this year. Splatoon 3 sold 7.9 million units total. That's absolutely incredible and almost doubled up the first game over halfway to Splatoon 2's lifetime to date sales as well in, you know, a very short time period. So that's awesome. Nintendo Switch Sports is at 6.15 million. So really good for that game as well. Of course, well behind like Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort, but hey, it's still really good. Mario Strikers Battle League sold 2.17 million. This actually beats out the GameCube Strikers game, but does fall short of charged on Wii 
for now. Again, obviously, that was on the market much longer. So we'll see if Battle League can surpass it next year. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has sold 1.72 million so far. It is the fastest selling Xenoblade Chronicles game ever. And while it's still half a million or so behind Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Lifetime to date sales, it's pretty it's pretty much gonna pass that at some point, maybe even over this holiday season. Now they had 15 different games so far this fiscal year, so in two quarters, sell at least one million units. That is incredible. 95.41 million pieces of software sold in this previous quarter, which is a year-over-year increase of 1.6%. So, as I said, their software is doing incredibly well. We can't ignore that fact. Now, let's get into the update to their top 10 sales. So, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold 48.41 million units. That's their number one seller, of course. Probably will cross 50 million this holiday. Animal Crossing New Horizons is at number two at 40.17 million units. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has sold 29.53 million units. I bet it hits 30 million after this holiday season. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has sold 27.79 million units. Clearly going to cross 28 million. I don't know if it'll quite get to 30 before we get Tears of the Kingdom, but time will tell. Pokemon Sword and Shield comes in at 25.37 million units. Super Mario Odyssey is next at 24.4 million units. Super Mario Party is right after that at 18.35 million units. Then we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl having sold 14.92 million units. Ring Fit Adventure chiming in at 14.87 million units. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee round out that top 10 at 14.81 million units. And to give you even another update, because you know we talked about Xenoblade and Splatoon, I forgot to mention this one. Kirby in the Forgotten Land has sold 5.27 million units. It is now officially the best-selling Kirby of all time. And this is such a big deal because we have not had a Kirby sell this well since the 90s. So, yeah, Nintendo, you're on to something with Kirby in the Forgotten Land. We better get a sequel in that style or something with just as much care, hopefully, you know, in two to three years. Now, I do want to let you know there were no new updated numbers for Metroid Dread, which means RGT85 technically won his bet. It probably sold over three million, but his bet was basically based on the fact that, hey, Nintendo's not going to update the official figures, maybe ever. So, here we sit. And we don't really know the exact numbers of that game sold. Anyways, while this also isn't new news, Tears of the Kingdom is on their upcoming software list and is still listed for May 12th. It's just a financial report, but this is the first time it's had a release date on a financial report. Advance Wars is still TBA, as is Metroid Prime 4, and Pikmin 4 is just reconfirmed that it's still coming in 2023. So with all that being said, that's our Prime 5 today. I hope that you... You know, got your fill. We're going to be live streaming today. You might have already missed it by now, but if you didn't, we're going to be live streaming Sonic Frontiers on Switch for a launch stream. I have not played it on Switch. I've not played it at all. So I'm very curious how this game holds up. Does it play well on Switch? There's been a lot of negativity around the Switch version, just chilling online, you know, with, you know, like Digital Foundry out there. Oh, yeah, you should play any other version but Switch if you can. That's Digital Foundry's opinion. That doesn't always mean that it's the correct opinion. So I guess we'll find out firsthand. You guys can tune in and see if you want to pick up Sonic Frontiers today by, I don't know, watching me play it and see what I think about it. All right, guys. That being said, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.